Hello and welcome to the fourth part of uh, my Maltese course. I'm uh, getting back to grammar now. Um, and uh, this time I want to talk about two things that are actually quite closely related and very important in Maltese. Uh, particles and possessives. Okay, particles are, well, if you're not a grammar expert, particles are things that uh, um, describe relationships between objects such as of, from, to, uh, things like this. And possessives are also, the, they also describe the relationship of an object, but for example, like mine, yours, uh, okay, so that, that's basically it. Now in Maltese, um, there is a group of uh, basic uh, particles which is very important and several other particles that we'll keep learning and coming across and uh, finding out more but the basic ones are, uh, are the ones that you have to start with and uh, probably the most common one that you see everywhere in uh, for example names of towns or uh, districts is TA T A apostrophe. Now, um, a small digression. What what is this apostrophe at the end of the words, right? What is this thing? Well, I'm not sure if in every single case, but in most cases, for example, in all the verbs, apostrophe is actually an ein, meaning the G H. But when written at the end of the word, it and, and silent, it takes a form of the apostrophe. Uh, so it's not pronounced, it's not like in English, it has to stay there, it's part of the word. So ta apostrophe and ta ta are actually two completely different words. Ta apostrophe is off, but ta means he gave. So you can see the difference and it's very important that you never forget the little apostrophe when writing. Okay, getting back to particles. Ta basically means off, but uh, you know with languages uh, things are not always one to one. Um, meaning uh, mm, you have to try to understand the context in which it's uh, used more than uh, than what it represents in the English language. So basically it describes a relationship when something belongs to something else in a way. So um, in name, names of mm, districts for example of towns I live in Taparis which means of Paris. Paris was probably the name of the original creator of the uh, original owner of this land. So um, this represents the um, two things in English, either of or the apostrophe s at the end in English, of course. Uh, all right. Now, an important thing about all the all the uh, particles in Maltese is they have a different form when they're joined together with an article. You remember part two about articles? So instead of writing ta apostrophe il, you actually join the two together into tal. So this is it. Uh, if you have ta apostrophe itch, you have touch, T-A-C-H. And this goes for every single uh, particle, but uh, some of them are constructed slightly different. I'll get onto this. Okay. So now you know the most important particle, and now you know that you can have a form of it either without, uh, without the article or with the article. Now, the next two that I want to talk about is ma, M-A apostrophe, and B. Because in English, they're both basically 
uh, replaced by one English word, which is with. Now, as you can see in Maltese, you have two different ones for with. Why? Well, ma, apostrophe, is used to describe relationships that are equal. If you're, and it's like in 95% of cases, it actually uh, applies to people or living objects like uh, with the dog or like w w with another person, like with, m with my mother, ma ommi. Um, on the other hand, B, B-I, it doesn't have an apostrophe. Um, this one describes a um, mm, subordinate relationship, meaning uh, it's with, but understood more like using. Um, like, for example, uh, for, uh, you can, of course, join it with an article. So it can be Bill and like Bill Lapis with the pencil. I'm writing with the pencil, right? Uh, it's, I'm not walking along with the pencil who is my equal. In this case, it would be a ma. I'm using the pencil to do something. That's why it's B or Bill in this case. Uh, same thing with ma. It uh, joins with il to form a mal. No uh, apostrophe there. The apostrophe disappears when you join ta or ma with the article. Okay. So these are two whiffs. Whew, okay. Let's keep going. Uh, next two confusing ones are fi and jaw. Now, um, many Maltese people will say that these two can be used interchangeably because they both mean what in English is at or in. But fi is more like at and jaw is more like in. While in most cases, mm, you can use them interchangeably and fi is much more popular. Jaw is quite rare. Fi is used um, for all the generic cases while, while jaw is only used when uh, one object is completely surrounded by something else. For example, you can say jaw lilma in the water because water completely surrounds the object that you're talking about. Or you can say, mm, a, a very simple example, Jolgnin or Filgnin, in the garden or in the garden or at the garden. When you say Filgnin, it means more like you're at the garden grounds. Jolgnin would mean that you're like in the middle of a garden and all surrounded by it. Well, when you're unsure, in most cases, you can use fee. As I said, jaw is not that common. And as you heard, you can, of course, join them with uh, uh, ill. So it's jol and fil. And uh, none of these have apostrophes again. OK. Let's keep going to min and sa. These are actually opposites. Min is from and sa is to but in a very specific sense. Again, sa is not very commonly used. I, uh, I hear it very rarely. Uh, why I'm giving those two? Because they're used, for example, in uh, all the mm, period descriptions, like um, from to, you know, or uh, min is uh, <laughs> when you want to refer to something uh, as it begins from, and sa is the destination to which it goes. So you can use sa, for example, if you go to a town and you're going to end up in that town, but you're still going, then you use sa. Uh, you're not fi, you're not at the town yet. You're going to, to the town, not towards. The words is a different word, but that's another thing. So this is a difficulty with, with Maltese, that these things do not always um, represent the same things in English. OK, now, min is uh, sal is joined, with, sa is joined with articles regularly. So you just get sal, such, sash, san, etc. Uh, no apostrophes again. Min, which is M-I-N-N, which is very important because M-I-N mean 
this is pro min is pronounced min and m i n with a single n is pronounced mean and it means who 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 is there right so don't confuse the two now how do you merge min with um with an article well it actually changes to a different word it changes into mill m i l l and uh, you use it with the double l's always except for one case when the word that you join it with obviously using the dash because when you use the article you use the dash so in all the previous cases and here if you say mill um, mill polonia for example from poland which is my native country which you probably have guessed mm, uh, you use m i l l dash polonia right um, but if the first letter of the word is l you cannot have three l's that's like no so you cut off one L. So you just get mil, for example, mil Libya, mil dash Libya. It's M I L dash Libya. You will get all these uh, things to practice uh, in my memorize deck. So uh, remember that this must go along with the memorize deck. You will find uh, at least two parts of the memorize deck on particles, I believe. Okay. So next, Al. <laughs> and lil. Al is for. For a cause, for something, for somebody. It's used in many different uh, contexts. While lil is a tricky one. Lil means two, but uh, it is used almost exclusively uh, in reference to people. Um, and it is used in many contexts when in English you would not have an, uh, an um, particle at all. So, okay, um, I'm, I'm trying to think up some examples, but um, when you use lil, for example, if I talk to somebody, uh, if I explain to somebody and then, then, then you use lil in all these cases um, basically you just have to uh, keep learning keep uh, listening and seeing in which cases it's used but I don't think it is ever used uh, for any inanimate objects on, or if it is it would be quite a rare uh, thing alright now Al, which is Ein Al, so G H A L, um, joins with an article to become Al, double L. So you just add a, another L. And the same thing as with uh, Mill before, if you have a third L, then you just drop the second L from Al. So then you have Al dash Libya, for example or al dash lapis. Um, same thing with lil, you also add an extra l or you don't. When uh, in both cases, if uh, we're talking about uh, consonant shem shin, uh, then obviously it changes into ash, ach, an, or lil, lin, liz, etc, etc. Mela. Mm, next, uh, next uh, and last of the basic uh, particles is pal, which is B, even though it's pronounced as P, because you, you, you just cannot pronounce it bhal. It would sound weird, right? So uh, this is another thing that uh, happens in many languages. You just flatten some, uh, v some consonants to sound uh, similar to other consonants because it's hard to pronounce. So it's, it's pal. Uh, and pal means like like something. So when you want to describe a similarity between uh, objects or similarity between people as well. All right, so, and it obviously follows the same uh, rules when it comes to articles. So an extra L is added or last L is, ch the, the, or the L is changed in, into an N or another consonant, consonant shemshin. 
All right, so these are the basic um, particles. There are also other particles which you use sometimes, uh, but I don't want to focus on these because they're not that uh, difficult. Um, and they're not joined with uh, articles. So when you have one of those other particles, they uh, stand on their own and then there is uh, the article. For example, fu. F U Q. The uh, remember the uh sound from the first lesson. Fu. Fu means on or above. When you wanna when you wanna talk about something that is on top of something else, it's different than fi, right? F for example, on the floor, fu l'art. Noticed le art. Fu space le art. So the article is separate. You, you have no fu or anything like this, all right? This doesn't exist, all right? The opposite of fu is tacht, which is T-A-H-T, which is under, right? Then you have lane, which is towards, if you want to talk like nimshi uh, lane, il posta shol ti like uh, I'm, I'm walking uh, towards uh, the place where I, wor where I work, right? Um, Lura uh, means back, so when you want to describe uh, something uh, turning around, like so. Uh, the most famous Maltese expression that a lot of foreigners hear, Mur Lura Paisek, go back to your country, right? Mur Lura, Mur, go, uh, it's an imperative, Mur Lura, back, so go in the opposite direction, Paisek. Pais, your country, ek. Ah, your country, the ek. And this is exactly what I want to talk about in this lesson as well. These are the possessives. In Maltese, you can add um, a suffix that describes uh, that something belongs to somebody or relates to somebody, not really belongs, more like relates to somebody. Um, and you can do this with uh, uh, nouns, you can do this with uh, uh, particles as well, and you can do this with uh, verbs. There are slight differences, uh, so I don't want to get into this very deeply at the moment, but you will notice it. When you have uh, I or N at the end of the word, mm, mostly I, it's, uh, mm, in, in, or an I, an I, not N, an I. Um, it means that it relates to the first person. Means, for example, Pajiz, P A J J I Z, with the dot, Pajiz is country. My country is Pajizi. Uh, when you have an ni, that's usually, th that's for verbs, but it's a, 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 again the same thing. You can say uh, like, uh, mm, I'd is say, idly, uh, idly, that's, uh -huh. that's another trick because you can also have a particle which uh, is mm, lil which shortens lil. So idly is uh, actually uh, tell to me, say to, say to me, not tell, say to me. But I me, help me, right? You have the an I. And the, s the second person is ek, ok, k. So for example, paizek, your country, mur lura paizek. Mm, third person masculine is u or akka, the silent h, right? So it's uh, paizu, his country. Uh, third person feminine is uh, akka a, a, pronounced a because you don't pronounce the akka, but it's written h a. Uh, so paiza, her country. Uh, first person plural is uh, na, paizna, our country. 
second person plural is com, K-O-M, so país com, your country as in more than one you, and uh, mm, their country, so third person would be paisom, which is H-K-O-M, H-O-M, the silent H. Again, it's not pronounced, so it's paisom. Okay, now, why I wanted to talk about these is because the particles can actually be joined with them. Yep, it gets a little bit more complicated, but again, it will explain a lot of things that you hear or see very often. So, for example, ta, of, right, ta apostrophe, it can be joined with those uh, suffixes to create a whole set of seven uh, seven words, meaning mine, yours, his, hers, ours, etc. And it is actually means of me, of you, of him, of her. How is that done? Well, um, as I said, the apostrophe at the end is an ein. So when it's actually, uh, when you add a suffix to it, you cannot have an apostrophe in the middle. The apostrophe has to change into an ein. And some vowels change as well. So, ta apostrophe, when you join, join it with i, it won't be ta i, right? It will be ti. T-i-e, 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 t -i -e, g-h, ein, i, ti. And this is another thing that I wanted to mention. Notice that it's not pronounced T, even though I said in the first course that ein is not pronounced and it elongates the vowel. Since it's T, I, E, ein, I, it should elongate the I or the I, E, right? So it should be T. And that's the way people still speak in the free cities, actually. But most people, and this is the common pronunciation, actually say ti, not ti. So learn the more common pronunciation, not the specific accents. When you become a pro and you, when you live in Cotoniera, right, and then you can get a Cotoniera accent, but at the beginning let's do it like most people do. Okay. Uh, same thing with uh, of you, which w of you, which will be ek, so ta and ek is tiek, t i e g h e k, right? Uh, tiau with a u would be of him, so his. Now it gets a little more complicated when we get to uh, her, because then it changes. It becomes taha. Why taha? Because you have ta, ein, the apostrophe changes into ein, and you add ha. And then you have an ein next to an akka. One silent next to one silent. Remember when I said in the first course, when the two are together, they're actually both pronounced as a deep H, as the cut H. So it's taha. It's not ta. It's taha, right? Uh, ours is tana. Where's the H? It's again just a single ein. There is no akka in there. So we go back to the original pronunciation, meaning. Um, gh, the ein, elongates a. So it's tana. Uh, you, yours, as in plural yours, is takom. So t a g h apostrophe changes into a nine k o m, and theirs is tahom. Again, because you have an akka next to an i, so both of an uh, ein, so both of them are pronounced as h. So you have t a ein akka o m, t a g h h o m, and it's pronounced tahom. Okay, the same thing happens to all the other 
uh, particles. That's why you have my memorize course where you can practice all of them because they're all in there. For example, me I with me, me ek, uh, meow, mah, uh, mana, mahom, makom, etc. Right? So that's for ma. Uh, B is actually not covered in the memorize course because it's super, super simple, uh, but it's really used because with. Uh, as I told you, with uh, BI is used mostly for objects. It's not used for people. It can be, but rarely. It's the same thing with fee. Uh, you can have fic uh, uh, at you. Like, for example, oh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, that is also tells you that you have to get used to the ways that particles are used in Maltese, and it won't always be the same in, as in English. Because in English, you say, think of you. I think of you. In Maltese, you say, I think at you. Nach sep fik. F I K. At you. Exactly. Um, min, al, and lil, and pal are a little more complex when it comes to. Uh, to joining them with the uh, with the um, possessives, so basically go into my course and you can you can learn. For example, uh, al uh, for me it's not ali, it's aliya, it's an irregular. You add a ja additionally to it. That doesn't happen often, so you basically have to learn these uh, by heart. And, oh my, this is quite a long lesson, I can see. But these two things really needed to be talked about together, and uh, they're very important because they appear in the language all over the place, at least now you know uh, what they mean. Um, it will still take you some time to practice until you figure out how to how and when to use them. And believe me, I am far from perfect at this. I still get confused uh, very often when, for example, you use fi and when you use fu. So above or at, that can be confusing to me sometimes. I sometimes use ta off instead of min from, because in Maltese, in ma many contexts that in English you would use off, in Maltese you actually use from. So, it's all part of the practice, but well, you get the basics. Remember to practice with memorize, and uh, good luck. And uh, I think that the next part of my course will be about numbers in Maltese. Ah, as you notice, nobody uses numbers in Maltese in common speech. They use English, and there is a reason for it. And you will have, you, you will understand the reason when I start talking about numbers in Maltese. But that's next part. So for now, enjoy. Thank you.